welcome back to Green Corner. I am your MCG, the host Ignatio. Now today is a very special episode. I'm happy to have back on our show Miss Natasha Lee, one of my favorite home gardeners. Now today is a very special episode. I'm calling it Total Local with Natasha Lee. Now Natasha Lee, I want to say thank you very much for joining us on our show once more. And I know you have something very unconventional, different for us today to learn. So I would like you, if you can please um, give us a little insight into what are we going to learn today. Okay, so thank you very much, Ignat. Thank you for being here and having me on MCTV again, Green Corner. Um, today we're going to be doing three different kinds of flower. Coconut flower, our first up. As an educator, it is my main goal to share what I know and as he said, total local. I love using my local produce and you may have seen making coconut flour on TV, on YouTube, you've seen it in the grocery and this is my way of doing it and I am very happy to be here to share this with you. Okay, now is coconut flour something difficult to make? And um, we would like to know the various processes that are involved in making coconut. But just to go a little before, now, do we have coconut flour in Trinidad and Tobago? Yes, I've seen it on the shelves in the supermarket. I did not pay attention to whether it was locally produced, but I know for sure we have some foreign brands. A few years ago, Ms. Nina Khan hosted a baking competition for 4-H and my students entered and one of the categories was creating your own flour for a different kind of bread and that's when the whole local flour, local bread thing came about for me. So I started at that time and it's pretty costly in the grocery and I decided, look, we're going to learn how to do this. Um, it's not very difficult to make and actually the coconut flour itself is what we would throw away after taking the milk out from the coconut. So you'll see all the processes. Look, okay, excellent. So I'm excited to learn this option. So right. um, let's get started. All right, so of course you have here your chipped coconut. If you don't have a bullet or a blender and you want to grate it, that's fine. But I usually, this is three coconuts here. So I prefer to use a bullet so it's going to come down fine enough one time. Three coconuts, right? Yeah, that's and it. Is, is how much pounds of flour that may come up at the end? I can't really see. I never really check it. But we can check it today after okay. we finish. We'll wear it and you'll get to figure it out. Now, you don't put a lot because you have to get it very fine. And you want to make sure that it's fine enough and all the milk comes out. And of course we're going to strain, so you can hold the strain here. And we get our yummy coconut milk. So I'll just do two batches of this and then remove it from here. So we also we have the coconut to make flour and we also consider ah, the milk. Of course. Now the milk, you can use your milk to make coconut oil and then still from that you still have the liquid part that's left that you can use in pilau, kalalu. So you have a variety of products coming out of this. Product. how diverse coconut can be and uh, for those of you who don't know coconut is very good for your heart, health, heart health problems, digestion, high antioxidants as well so coconut is very diverse. All right. So now we want to rinse this a second time so you can throw it in here. Now you can squeeze this in a piece of chiffon cloth 
if you have one available, I have mine there. I usually use that for cassava. When you squeeze this up like this, it's pretty dry. It's good enough to put it to the patch. Now you can do it in the oven. You can put it out in the sun for a couple of days. But with our rain right now, it's advisable that you do it in a warm oven for a couple of hours. Right, so three cocoas. Yeah, this is three we have here. The rest is in the sink. So here we have our, see how nice and dry it is. So three coconuts blend, strain, and spread. Right. So you don't want it too thick because you want it to be able to dry. So you could use two trays or so. And all you do with this at this point is stick this in an oven on very low temperature and allow it to patch and you can leave the oven open slightly so that the steam comes out because you don't want it to remain moist you want it to get really dry. really dry i like putting it in the sun because it saves energy so you're, you're cutting down on your cost as well or if you use that gas oven no gas needed so at this point so far all we use is a little bit of current to blend if you're grating it nothing at all so you can look at it from that point of view as well so Dry it in the sun and do it a light toast, and then we go to grind again to make it flavor. So you can both bake it, toast it in the oven, mm -hmm. uh, or mm -hmm. sun dry it. Yes. So what, which one are we going to use today? Uh, I sun dry some, and I give it a little light toast, so it's a little brown, and that's what we're going to use for the flour now. Okay. Right. So, so basically, so, this is the first process. Yes. Three coconuts, blend, strain, spread. Some, and if we sun dry it out, how, how, how much days? At probably two to three days. Two to three days. Don't let it get wet because of course it will get a fungus. It will get wet. And a fungus, your whole batch will be ruined. Right. So very hot sun and before the sun dips, before it cools, take it inside, cover it. And when the sun comes out next morning, sunshine. If you find the weather is bleak, damp, put it in the oven because you don't want to waste your product. All right. Okay, guys. So when we get back, we are going to be looking at how does a coconut look after two days of being sun dried. Yeah. So guys, after two days sun drying the coconut, 
toast that fuck is a 10 minutes, here we have the fish. Right, so here you have fried coconut, uh, coconut meat, the coconut husk, um, whatever you want to call it. And you'll see that it's very light and airy. And what we have to do with this, now I'm going to use my bullet again. And don't put too much in because you want to get a good stirring and turn it into a powder. Um, if you don't have a bullet, maybe you can use a mill. I never use anything but a bullet, but you can try. Yeah, 
able to mix this flour with cassava and moko plantain? Yes, you can put any kinds of flour together to create okay. your bread or okay. roti. Yeah. Okay, so it's not going to be fully coconut. You can, gonna... you can use this alone just as it is. With a, now, remember this. If you feel the texture of this, it is not as smooth as a wheat flour. So, for me, I usually add a little cassava flour with the coconut flour. If you're using coconut flour alone, you need to do some puree pumpkin because you need to get something to kind of bind it. There are tons of coconut flour recipes online and I've used a few of them and they come out really, really good. So, here what guys, she indicated that we are going to be mixing a little cassava flour and a little moko plantain flour. But guess what? We are actually going to learn now how to make moko plantain flour and how to make cassava flour. Yes. Stop. 
as starchy. So if you're diabetic and you want to make this and take out some of the starch, to leach out some of the starch, you're going to wash this. And when you get that water, you leave it aside. And it's when it settles, the uh, powder at the bottom, that's going to be your cassava starch. You don't throw that away. That's what you're going to use now as a thickening agent, like cornstarch in your Chinese food, or if you make an ice cream, you use the cassava starch. So again, you're going to get two things out of this process. So pass me a clip job. Right? So I like to wash this out. I like to wash it. We squeeze it a bit. Put any variety of cassava.
allow flowers, there's some provision come out a lot smoother than the coconut. Mm. So if when you try it, you kind of 
tomatoes choka. There is no onion and garlic. It is just uh, tomatoes from my garden, carrot leaves, um, some bandana, and some coconut oil, cherry peppers from my dad's garden, coconut chutney, and some pepper sauce. Total local, guys. Everything. Just salt. 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 Just making three different types of flour. The sour flour, coconut flour, and the mocha plantain flour. And just to recap these steps regarding the coconut flour, you can just take about two to three coconut, mm -hmm. you cut the mix it up, you grate it, you, you grate it, you strain it, mm -hmm. and you air dry it for about two days. And if you want um, to have any oven, you patch it for about 10 minutes. Right. And the cassava flour is the same method where we just we blend it, mm -hmm. we blend it, we air dry it, right. we blend it, strain it, air dry it. Right. For yeah. About two days. Yeah. And for ten minutes. Yeah. For ten minutes. Yeah. For ten minutes. Mm -hmm. And the moko plant and flour. That's a little different. I do like to put that out to air dry. So and that doesn't have to ring either. The other two has a lot of juice to squeeze out. Right. right. So the moko plant and flour, we just um, we grated it. Mm -hmm. And we just um, toasted it in the oven for a, a couple of hours. Yes. So this is our end product here, guys. You see how simple it was to create a flour. So I am going to taste what we have just prepared for me here. Cheers. Cheers. I'm very excited. I'm very excited to taste this. So it's a flat bread mm -hmm. combined with cassava flour, plantain flour.
tune in next week, same time, same place. As we bring to you some helpful agricultural tips. I am your MCT. I am your MCT host. Take not sing, wishing you a happy planting and a healthy harvest.